It is a chapstick wearing caramel macchiato drinking kind of day today, okay, honey? Also, no makeup wearing kind of day because I have a pet peeve thing to know about me. I do not like to apply my makeup with anything but one of those blenders. It can be a beauty blender, it can be any kind of blender at all whatsoever. Blenders from Walmart, they work perfectly. Sometimes they work even better than a beauty blender, but same mechanism. I will not wear makeup if I don't have one of those. That's why I've been going barefaced for the past week right now because, like I said in a previous video, I accidentally threw my overly used crusty ass nerdy ass beauty blender away and I was like I didn't I wasn't finished with you yet I still needed you in my life that's why I look ratchet again but it's okay we have a caramel macchiato to cheer things up this needs this episode of a tea talk needs more than just a tea honey it needs a caramel macchiato with a twist I got two extra shots of espresso in here let's do this also shameless self promo time before I get into today's tea talk I have my music channel up and running and ready for everyone to see it's everyone's already been seeing it but you know kind of hyping it up right now so many covers ready to go for the next month i have bad boy coming out by red velvet i have youth by daughter i have perfect by ed sheeran all ready to go alex bands only one is coming out tomorrow 10 a.m est and also imperfection by Evanescence. I have so many Evanescence songs in the works that I'm doing right now. I got so many instrumentals that I'm just singing happy right now. I'm so excited and I'm so just ready to get my grind on for music because I think what we have covers ready for the next month and a half. <laughs> so if you guys want to subscribe to my music channel, I'll leave it as a link at the end of this video. But to get into today's tea talk, <laughs> Do I know where to start? I have no idea where to start. This isn't as much as, oh honey, I'm gonna spill the tea all over you today. It's, I'm gonna spill a vat of coffee and tea and just everything all at once. But in the first article that we have here, because I have so many tabs open, League of Legends Quinn is getting late game buffs better ultimate. Things getting a makeover recently. I don't know what's going on, but every single character that I'm seeing in video games recently are just getting so many makeovers. Like. Quinn is getting a makeover, Resident Evil is getting a makeover, by the way Resident Evil 2 is gonna be a thing and it's gonna be rebooted just like the very first Resident Evil games. So uh, thank you Capcom and Mikami for making this a thing. Finally, we've been waiting frack frickin' forever and I have to uh, look and see, if, and I have to actually double check and see because there aren't going to be the same voice actors for the project. I know for Resident Evil 3 they had to change up the voices of Claire Redfield and Leon and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm really excited, but this, <laughs> this article. Now it states here in the article that following up on a recent discussion about Marksman and Lane Bully Quinn, the champion is receiving a small update soon to shift her power towards late game period while also improving her ultimate. Now for any people who are League of Legends fans out there, I myself am not a League of Legends fan. I never have played the game. I've seen a couple of like walkthroughs and a couple of videos of it, but I never really got into it that much. So for people, you know, for a lot of people, this is going to be a big improvement and everything like that. But the one thing that I'm really noticing, like I said, so many people are changing around characters, even though it's like a main character in a story, people are changing them. And you know, it's, it's sometimes for the better, or sometimes for the worse, actually. It also states here in the article that the goal of this short term update is to increase the power as the game progresses while also removing bugs and feel bad mechanics centered around Quinn's ultimate behind enemy lines. The move allows Quinn to move quickly about the map and apply pressure outside her limits but also has a few hang-ups that make it frustrating to use at times. So this is like a patch, basically, for something that wasn't working and now they're fixing it, but they're also updating her as well. So I really think that's a cool thing. So for any League of Legends fans out there, please comment down below. Do you think this is a good thing that they're doing? I'll leave the article in the description below so you guys can check it out and see for yourselves. Now this next article that we have in store is kind of one that I thought was going to be like a gag, a gif, a grifumble as Markiplier would say. But it's not. It's actually a serious thing. Can legislation fix gaming's loot box problem? Do y'all think I'm joking? I'm not joking. I wish I were. I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm not, it's going far, guys. It's going really too far right now. 
Last year's gaming controversy has turned into this year's legislative battleground. Fans were outraged when Star Wars Battlefront 2 launched with a viable loot box that unbalanced multiplayer combat and other games like Need for Speed, Payback, and Destiny 2 had their own pay-to-win controversies. Essentially, loot boxes unsettled enough constituents to rile their representatives. Legislators in Hawaii, Washington, and Illinois have been introduced to bills to either study loot boxes or restrict access to young players, but how effective will they be? What else can lawmakers do? Um, make guns illegal. Fix loot box problem. Make guns illegal. Fix loot box problem. Make a caramel macchiato illegal because it's doing all the wrong things. Or fix a loot box problem. Uh, humanity. What's happening? What, what I. What is currently happening to humanity that loot boxes are taking a precedence over lawmakers, politicians, people who are supposed to be focusing on like town hall meetings and lies and briberies and you know getting in one another's pants and stuff like that. I mean, come on. This is not supposed to be something that a lawmaker is supposed to be like subjected to, obviously. I mean, oh, good lord. It states here that Hawaii State Rep Chris Lee, a gamer himself, he favors the Battlefield series and Rockstar game o over, 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 that, that word, believes there's plenty to do. The Democrat introduced four bills last month. Two, one introduced to the State House and one to the Senate, would restrict the loop boxes in Hawaii to those older than 21, while another pair would force companies to disclose the odds of winning potential game items. It's not the strongest rebook of the game's history, not the strongest rebook of the game industry that he and his co-authors can be lead told and gadget, but it is a step in the right direction and will spur conversation. It's definitely spurring conversation. It's spurring all the right things. Oh, I, I don't get it. This For me, this is just stupid. Like, why are House Representatives focusing on gaming? Let the gamers focus on the gaming. You guys, you, you focus on your stuff. You focus on what you gotta do to keep us sane, keep the laws intact and the government, you know, governing. Just do, do all that. But don't bring it into legislation. Once you make laws for gaming, then I got a problem. So next up, we are gonna be talking about some good old fashioned YouTube news. I'm really excited about this. We're gonna be discussing a little bit of Jeffree Star, a little bit of heaven, a little bit of something, something. So I'm excited about that. I absolutely love Jeffree Star. I, I don't know about you guys. I know there's a lot of controversy between Jeffree Star and Kat Von D and everything like that. For me personally, I break it down the line and I think, okay, Kat Von D is her one entity. Jeffree Star is one entity. I. Listen, I have been buying products from Kat Von D for years. Ever since I was 17 years old, I think I've been buying products from Kat Von D. Jeffree Star, I have yet to try any of his products, but I watch Jeffree Star's YouTube channel religiously. I always got a cup of tea ready because you know tea is going to be spilt whenever Jeffree's talking. Just saying. I really absolutely love the channel. Like, I've been watching it since the beginning. I absolutely support everything what Jeffree Star does. So, shout out to Jeffree Star if you're watching this. Hi, boo boo. So there was a more recent video of Jeffree Star's that I watched and that I absolutely, <laughs> I absolutely love his like getting readies in cars and stuff like that. But this one caught my eye. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna come close to the camera so you're gonna see my facial. We all have that one person in our life that puts on makeup while he or she drives. Putting it out there, no, it's not safe, but does it make for an entertaining video? Yeah. Would it make for something that a smart person does? Yeah. I would think so. I mean, like, if you really are in a rush and you need to get ready, why not put your makeup on in the car? It's not something I've ever done because I'm a little more scared of driving than the average person because it's winter right now and I hate driving in snow. But when it comes springtime, you know, I'm... Listen, okay. <laughs> All hands on deck. I am there, top down, ready to go. Now, normally, would I support someone who does their makeup uh, in the car, let alone a Tesla, which is a very, very, very expensive car that's like four bajillion house payments all in one. <laughs> what I thought was interesting that it was on autopilot. Like, that would terrify me. I don't know about you guys, but doing your makeup in the car, it terrifies me enough. Having it on autopilot where you're not even driving at all, like, I'm, oh, oh, Jesus, take the wheel. It, it, it's, it's kind of interesting to me because he's, because Jeffrey has gotten a lot of hate for numerous amounts of things. He apologized, all this, all that, that's fine. 
But with this, I feel like it's unnecessary to hate someone when they're doing something that they just want to do. Granted, Jeffree Star is booty. Like, to the 10th degree, and that's one of the things that I love about him. Like, I absolutely, like, I'm so afraid of saying he or she because I feel like people are going to attack me in the comments below saying, no, it's, it's like, Jeffree Star is a she. Oh, no, Jeffree Star is a he. <clears throat> he said he's okay with being called he, so I'm going to stick with that. So I'm so sorry if I offend anybody because I want to use correct pronouns and everything like that. But... I really did enjoy this video. I honestly, my heart was racing the entire time. I was just like, oh, please be careful. Oh, that was a car. I'm just, I'm, I was scared. Okay. And also, I mean, if I ever come to Orange County and I see that car, I'm full out extending myself out the window just to say hi. Like that, that seriously, I'm going to do a whole kind of snake move and just go out the window and be like, what's going on? Because there's no way you can't recognize that car. His car and Trisha Paytas' car, there's no way you couldn't recognize those in LA. And to move on to our next part of the video, I was actually going to do this unboxing for my vlog channel, but I thought it might be a little more awesome to do in this video because there's an article that I found on pandas and I have... I finally got the plushie in from eBay on the pandas, so I'm really excited. I'm so excited. So we are going to open this up, and we're also going to discuss the article that I found on pandas while we're opening this up. So there is a panda's first appearance in the Finland Zoo, and it delights everybody. There's actually an exhibit um, in Utica that I want to go to. There's a zoo in uh, Utica, New York, and they have red pandas. You can hold them, and you can cuddle them. Oh my god, this is so cute! Yeah. Oh, this is so cute! <laughs> this is so kawaii! Look at his little scarf. He has a little scarf. Look at the little scarf. It's like an ornament panda. <laughs> this is so cute! Oh my gosh! What should we name her? Oh my goodness, you are so cute. Look at the little... F guys. Guys! Look at him. Her. I don't know if it's a he. It's definitely a she. I feel like the other one that I have is more of a, a he because, you know, he's bigger. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. But this is so... Look at her little bum bum! <laughs> She's got a little bum-bum. I think I might name her Kawaii Panda, which by the way, merch, there's going to be a merch line of pandas that I'm going to be coming out with, and they're going to be each like different pandas, like Kawaii Panda, Coffee Panda, co like d d different pandas designs, and I'm really excited. Oh, look at this, so cute, so fluffy. Listen, I'm happy right now. Oh, you can remove the scarf too. Okay, I think I might remove the scarf because I love the scarf girl but it doesn't go with your pink kawaii aesthetic. Just saying. Oh yeah, that looks absolutely better. See, look at that. Look at the, look at the scarf. With that scarf, yes, work it, work it, work it, work it. So I don't know, let me know down in the comments below. What do you think we should name this kitty? Do you think it should just be kawaii panda? Or do you think we should name her something else? Let me know what you think her name should be. Is she gonna balance? No, I don't think so. Her head's too big. Oh, she's balancing. She's but it says here in the article that a pair of giant pandas made their first public appearance at the zoo in Finland on Saturday, delighting visitors with their joyous playing in the snow. The two pandas, Hua Beo and Piri in Finnish, and Jun Bao Bao, or Lumi, were allowed outside for the first time since they arrived in Finland last month. Now, this is a new segment that I'm bringing to the Tea Talks. Um, I want to be able to put more psychology into what I do with this channel, and I already do with a lot of my videos since psych is my degree, and I want to incorporate it any chance that I get, but I want to be able to do a diagnosis of gaming characters. So every Tea Talk, you guys are going to get a diagnosis of a different gaming character. Also, please leave in the comments below because after this episode, I'm going to start taking requests of what gaming characters you would like me to diagnose next. First character that we are going to diagnose is Blood Rain. So Blood Rain is a very interesting character and I was thinking, well, how would she typically be diagnosed? Um, you see, if she were in the real world, she would be diagnosed with clinical vampirism, 
schizophrenia, and schizoaffective disorder. So right here, I have the definitions up for what I'll be talking about today because for me, I have my own definitions and you learn to phrase the terminology differently whenever you are in the psych field learning it. So I'm gonna give you guys the actual definitions that way you guys don't get confused and be like, but this is something different. And so just to avoid confusion. Clinical vampirism, more commonly known as Reinfeldt syndrome or Reinfeldt syndrome, is an obsession with drinking blood. The earliest formal presentation of clinical vampirism with the psychoanalytic interpretation of two cases was contributed by Richard L. Vandenberg. Sounds like a, such a vampire name. And John F. Kelly in 1964. As the authors point out, brief and sporadic reports of blood drinking behaviors associated with sexual pleasure have have been appearing in the psychiatric literature at least since 1892. With the work of Austrian forensic psychiatrist Richard von Kraft Einberg, many medical publications concerning clinical vampirism can be found in the literature of forensic psychology, all that kind of stuff. Schizophrenia is where you have hallucinations and delusions, and a lot of times it can be called as a crazy person syndrome, where it's only called call that in the inner circle of psychology so please don't ever use that if you ever come across someone who is schizophrenic it, a lot of times schizophrenia can be uh, misdiagnosed as a hyperactive disorder mm -hmm. and a lot of the times schizophrenia is not oh, how should I say this is not as treated well because only one percent of the population does have it which is still a lot but still it's not as a very much of a it's not it's a very much of a taboo disease as i like to call it because not a lot of people like to talk about schizophrenia a lot of people think that oh schizophrenia is you know one where you have to get locked up in an asylum and everything like that and that's not the case a lot of people go about their normal daily lives they also see hallucinations they have delusions they hear voices all that kind of stuff and it can be something as simple as like a whisper but something as grandiose as someone telling you to do negative things it's not as simple as some people make it out to be where you're just simply seeing things and hearing things like it's not that simple the point where i think blood brain might have schizophrenia is that there are so many delusions and there's so many hallucinations that could be considered trippy or not normal to the normal person. So let's say for example whenever you saw ephemera going in and out of different portals and everything like that, that could be considered a delusion, that could be considered a hallucination of some sorts because you see these purple ghastly images coming to the forefront of her mind. So a lot of the delusions and a lot of the hallucinations could be perceived as a schizophrenic episode of sorts. And the reason why I would couple it with a mood behavior disorder could be where she has different types of moods. She has ones where she's really, really happy and ones where she's really, really pissed off and angry at the entire world. So it could be called like bipolar in a way so she could have schizophrenia coupled with a bipolar disorder. And that in itself is just hellish to go through coupled with coupled with also having Reinfeldt syndrome. I mean, in reality, she would be on so much medication. It's not even funny, but I don't really know the types of medication that's out there for Reinfeldt syndrome. So I'm going to look it up and I will leave a link to that down in the description below. I would also say that Blood Rain has abandonment issues as well, since at a young age, she saw her mother get killed. And the one person that she thought that could be there for her wasn't and she had to go out into the world and seek that comfort elsewhere whether it be with other guys or in the brimstone society and also side note reinfeld syndrome is named after dracula's human zavagus follower rm reinfeld just as a little side note. Now the main definition for schizoaffective disorder, just so you guys have it, is a psychological condition that comprises both a psychosis, a loss, or a disconnect with reality, and mood disorders such as mania or depression. There are two subtypes, and like I mentioned before, I would categorize Rain as having bipolar, but you can also have um, manic depression or just regular depression, but it's coupled with those two subtypes. So with her, I can see it being an, an over-exaggerated case of both of these, considering the fact that she not only has weapons that she's wielding, but she also is thriving on those hallucinations. So picture yourself, uh, well, okay, it's kind of stupid to say picture yourself, but for all intents and purposes, picture yourself as someone who has manic depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and Reinfeldt's disease. All in one. All in one. On top of that, 
trying to act through those hallucinations, fighting for the benefit of mankind, which also leads to my next conclusion that she might have a small bit of a Napoleon complex. She's thinking, oh, I'm saving humanity, I'm saving everyone, I'm, you know, doing everything for the betterment of mankind, all that kind of thing. So, yeah. Now, schizoaffective disorder is usually caused by an imbalance in the serotonin and dopamine in the human brain, but there is no actual known cause for schizoaffective disorder. So that's my diagnosis of blood rain, and yeah, she is she is one twisted mama. And the last part of our tea talk, we have some questions from you guys. Yes, the lovely viewers. And our first question is from Andrew, and he asks, "Good day, hipster. Hope you're having a day." I'm having a day. Is there a song or full game that you were excited about that ended up disappointing you? Positive vibes and peace to you and all your followers and subs for a great day and a week ahead. Oh, thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, yeah. Is there a song or game that I was excited about that ended up disappointing me? As many songs that really disappointed me as much as it were games. Um, I kind of feel like Outlast 2 was kind of a disappointment, I'm not gonna lie. Even though I loved the atmosphere of it and everything, going back, looking through it, and playing it again, it lacked a lot of what I thought was going to be there. The main thing that I really liked about Outlast 2 were the notes and that, and that crazy witch woman who would constantly chase us. I thought that was such a great part of the game. Also, those scary little tree creatures that would follow you around at that one point in the game. You guys, you guys know what part I'm talking about. Um, scary portions of the game, they were really, really scary. But overall, I feel like, but overall, I feel like the story was kind of lost in translation. The notes, like I said, absolutely brilliant. And I feel as if Father Martin was right there writing them as I was reading it. But I don't know. I don't know. There's just something lacking about Outlast 2 that made it kind of disappointing. I felt like the ending was a complete letdown. Some people actually beg to differ on the ending because I feel as if the ending where you see that bright light and everything was probably a mind control device from Murkoff. So... I don't know. You, you kind of have to. You kind of have to pick your battle whenever you're discussing. Was Outlast 2 a really good game? And I feel as if it had a lot of stuff lacking. The creatures absolutely scary, but yeah, it kind of disappointed me in the end. I'm not gonna lie. And also, Andrew added on to that question. He asks, yes or no. I'm gonna say no. Sometimes you just you gotta know when to say no. And our next question is from Peter Turner, and he asks, What three famous people, living or dead, would you want at your fantasy dinner party? And what is the most courageous thing you've ever done? Okay, um, Freddie. Well, first of all, I can state David Bowie. David Bowie would absolutely be awesome to have at a dinner party. I feel like he would have so many stories. Um, the next person I would want to have would probably be Robin Williams. So far, I'm picking people who passed away. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to have Robin Williams as one of the people at the dinner party. And then as a third person, probably Josh Ramsey from Mariana's Trench because he is just one awesome dude. And I feel as if I would have so much to talk about with him. And he would just bring like his collection of guitars and we would just go through and nerd about guitars constantly. So that's the three people I would have in my fantasy dinner party, two of them being musicians. What is one courageous thing you've done? Um, saying no to my ex-boyfriend whenever he would offer me weed. That was a courageous thing for me because at the time I wanted so badly to fit in with people. So for me, saying no to a certain social setting that I was in, that was pretty courageous for a millennial to do because you always want to fit in with people. You always want to try to do things that are like your peers and try to be akin with them. But you realize that a lot of the time you can't do that and you have to focus on yourself more because yourself is the only person that you got. So uh, I always realized that, you know, taking care of yourself is a pretty courageous thing to do whenever you also want to have a social circle. So, I mean, you have to say right to the, you have to say yes to the right people and no to the people who you might think are right for you at the time, but you need to stand up for yourself more. And that's a thing where I just think it's courageous that, that it's kind of courageous that I said, 
completely no to alcohol, completely no to weed and everything like that. Because at the time, did weed help me at the time? Yeah, it helped me get rid of my anxiety and panic attacks. I hated the smell. I hated everything about it. But yeah, I mean, is it good for medicinal stuff? For medicinal purposes, go ahead and use it. I have no problem with that. But um, for me at the time, it was I was going down a completely wrong path. And it was just... It was a matter of you had to stand up and be courageous and just say, no, I don't want that stuff. I have to make a better future for who I am. So, yeah, that was the most courageous thing I've ever done. But if you guys like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below because I make videos every damn day. If you guys want to submit a question or submit a piece of news or whatever you guys want to see on this tea talk, be sure to use the hashtag tea talk and I will respond and put it into said tea talk.